In another video, I reviewed a Tektronix type 545 oscilloscope from about 1957, and I mentioned that I had a, another scope that actually is in working order, and we'll go over that one with this video. So this is a circa 1956 um, type 531 oscilloscope. Um, it's a little bit older one. You can tell because the, the chassis design is different and how you access it. And, and we'll go over that in a few minutes. This scope has a lower bandwidth. It's about 10 megahertz compared to that other one of 30. And it does not have delete sweep on it. Otherwise, it's extremely similar. Um, it also uses the same series of uh, plug-in preamplifiers. In this case, I, in particular, I have this uh, Type 1A1 trace, dual trace plug-in in here, which is a lot newer than this particular scope is. Um, this plug-in unit would date from the middle 1960s instead of the middle 1950s. Um, the scope is, at least it was in working order the last time I had it powered up about a year ago. Um, it's also in the uh, what they call the brown era. And I have it on this homemade cart that I made many years ago. I've had this scope since 1986. And I believe I paid about $5 for it in non-working condition at that time. And over the years I've done a number of repairs and recaps on it. And I think there's the only original capacitors left in it are the filter electrolytics, surprisingly enough. Those seem to have been perfectly fine. It's always been the oil and paper capacitors that end up getting leaky and failing and, and causing issues. Um, this plug-in here, right next to it, is the one you'd more typically see in this type of scope. And this is a, a type CA dual trace, which is a bit older one. And the one I typically had in the scope. Um, the last time I used the scope, I was looking at some lower level voltages that the CA couldn't resolve. So on this particular one, they have a, I don't know if it was an option or not, but there's this access port here where this comes off and you've got two holes and you can put wires in there to get at the CRT for the vertical deflection. Also has a cooling fan in the back, power cord, and then a Z-axis signal injection. All right, I will uh, take off the, or pull the back cover off of this momentarily, and we can take a look at the inside. Here I've removed the, uh, the housing or the cover from the unit. Um, these slip off from the back side, so you have to uh, tilt the instrument up on its face plate which is is best done like I've done here on a, in a carpeted floor so you don't damage any of the knobs on the front there's a couple screws and it slips right off um, so here we can look at the the bottom side of the power supply chassis and all of the orange capacitors are ones that I've replaced in the past um, to correct various uh, flaky flaky operations over time that I've observed with this thing. I Next I'm going to set this up back on the cart and we can look at the sides. Here I've put the Type 531 um, back on the cart without the um, cover on it so we can look at the inside. Um, Compared to the 545 in my other video, you can see that there's barely any vacuum tubes in here, whereas the other one had numerous, numerous push-pull stages to feed the delay line over here. Um, this particular scope only has a couple of tubes, and that's how they got the extra bandwidth, by having more tubes in it. This scope is only about 10 megahertz compared to 30. As well, there's a cooling fan in the back. The power supply chassis is very similar to the uh, 545 we looked at earlier. Uh, we do not have that swing out sub chassis because this does not have delayed sweep. 
If this was a 535, it would have that delayed sweep chassis that we saw in the other video. Again, large transformer. Um, the horizontal sweep circuits are here. And then also the, the high voltage components and the tripler arrangement for the CRT are under that cover. This scope still has some of its original selenium rectifiers in it. Um, when I acquired it, it had all of them and I had problems with it. And being ignorant at the time, I thought there were problems with the selenium rectifiers and replaced some of them with diodes. And I've still yet to fix kind of a kludge job I did with some of them diodes. The other ones, I've put them on some terminal strips. It definitely looks a little better. There's the underside of that with your timing capacitors and so on. All right, the uh, next segment of the video, I'll have the cover back on and we're going to power it up and check out some of the features. Um, now we're going to check out some of the operational features of this Tektronix Type 531 oscilloscope. And I've taken out the plug-in unit that I had in there, and I'm going to put in the Type CA that I showed earlier, is, which is more age-appropriate, even though this particular plug-in is newer, newer than the scope. So there's many interchangeable preamplifiers that were available for these. This one is a, a dual trace one, uh, very commonly seen on many of this era oscilloscope from the 50s and 60s. Um, now that it's been plugged in, we're gonna we're gonna power this up and run it through some of its paces. We'll just turn the power on here. You can hear the cooling fan start up. So I have an illuminated graticle. A lot of these scopes, like the other one I showed, have a green filter. Um, this scope has a green filter. I've taken it out. Um, I find the um, no filter a little bit easier to look at. It's also possible to get the graticle lines to appear in red by taking the uh, bezel out and flipping it over where there's red paint where the light bulbs shine through. So that click you heard was the power-up relay. So there's a delayed power-up relay that kicks in after about a half a minute. So you can see now that we do have a bit of a trace here. Let me get this, uh, is it that lamp or the other lamp that's causing this bad reflection I have? No, it's not that one. Turn that one off. No, we still have some bad reflections here. Um, I will, uh, bear with me a moment and we'll get back to this. All right, we are back. Um, I think I got rid of most of the glare. So uh, our scope is now powered up. It's somewhat warmed up. And we have a trace on the screen here that by adjusting the vertical position, we can move that around. Likewise, there's a horizontal position control that will adjust the position horizontally. And since this is a dual trace plug-in, we're showing only trace one. So if I go to trace two, it, it suddenly is on the uh, lower one. All right, and then uh, there's a number of modes we have here. So alternating shows both traces at once, and then they alternate which one is sweeping. And you can easily see this if you turn down, or you turn up the, turn down actually, the sweep rate. So if we turn down the sweep rate, you can see that the uh, traces are being alternated from A to B. So it shows A, then it shows B, then it shows A, then it shows B. Likewise, there's a chopped setting. And what that does is it rapidly alternates between A and B. And you can kind of see that if you turn up the sweep rate very high. And you will see what looks like a square wave. I don't have a signal injected. So what we're seeing here 
There's a little bit of A, then a little bit of B, then a little bit of A, and a little bit of B, and so on. Back and forth. <coughs> All right. Depending on what you're looking at, one or the other may be the preferred setting. So let's go back to just a single sweep here. So this has, you know, various sweep setting speeds, how, how many you know, microseconds per division that we are at. Um, these older ones have two knobs to adjust that instead of a single knob. Um, there's some other features having to do with a, using an external sweep input. I am not going to get into that right now. Um, there's triggering settings. And frankly, these old scopes don't trigger very well on things. They're easily messed up. Um, they do not like complicated uh, waveforms with lots of spiky stuff in them. Um, they, and there's not a lot of trigger modes that, unlike a more modern scope, would have to uh, get around that. Next thing I'm going to do is I will hook up the, uh, the calibrator waveform here and we'll show you what that is about. So I've connected the calibrator output of the scope into the channel B of the preamplifier. So I have that set to uh, 0.5 volts per centimeter. And if we look over here, the calibrator has been turned on and it's putting out um, 2 volts two volts peak to peak. So if we're at a half a volt per division, you can see that we have uh, four divisions. So uh, that exactly matches what the calibrator amplitude is. And that the calibrator on these is used for two purposes. is to check the gain of the amplifier and also to compensate the scope's um, input capacitance for overshoot and undershoot. What's really nice about these old scopes is there's a lot of uh, voltage settings you can use on these calibrator outputs. Your typical modern scope, I have like a 5 volt digital signal and that's it's fixed and you can't adjust any of the amplitude. So back on these type 531, so I've connected a uh, function generator up to the input and we're going to look at some of the triggering features and other settings. Um, so what I have here is a 1960s vintage Tektronix probe connected. Um, it's not exactly the correct probe that would have been sold new with this scope, but it's about as good as you're going to get. Um, and what I have there is a function generator putting out 500 hertz of an AC sine wave. And if we go look over here, we have uh, this set for uh, 100 microseconds per division with a multiplier of 5. So that's 500 microseconds per division. And if you look at the peaks between the sine wave, there are four divisions. So you got 4 times 500, which uh, works out the math. If you invert it, that, that comes out to your 500 hertz. So this scope hasn't been cowled for a while, but it's, it's reasonably okay. Um, I, you don't definitely use these for any precision frequency measurements for sure. Now looking at the triggering, so you, there's a bunch of trigger modes, and I have this one set at uh, AC fast triggering, which is allowing you to adjust the trigger level. So if you go over here and you adjust the trigger level ring, you can see that it moves up and down as I, I turn the knob. Uh, unlike a more modern scope, these are not the best. And then there's this other thing called triggering stability that you have to tweak on. So it's kind of a compromise between the two in order to get the trigger properly. A lot of times you leave it on AC automatic um, and then tweak the uh, stability here, but then you don't have the ability to adjust the trigger point on this side at all. However, it tends to be more stable in that mode. And then you have AC fast, AC slow. It just puts in different filters on the triggering circuit. Uh, and then you have external trigger at that jack over there. 
if you need it. Um, if I had that other plug-in unit in earlier, that has a trigger out on it, and that allows you to select which channel you're triggering on, and then you have to run a cable from here up to there. Um, with this older plug-in unit, um, it tends to try to trigger off whatever's coming out of the plug-in unit, which depending on what you have, it, it may not work at all. Um, so that's one of the downsides of these older style triggering units. Here I've changed my uh, signal generator to put out uh, 5 megahertz AC and adjusted the scope accordingly in order to display that. I, I can tell you that it was struggling a little bit on getting a clean trigger on this one and also the sweeps off a little bit but here we are at the point 0.1 and the 1 the setting so we're on 0.1 microseconds per division um, and here the, the spacing between the, the for the period is two divisions so it's 0.2 microseconds which is your 5 megahertz. Um, this scope being only a bandwidth of about 10 um, if I were to turn this up a little higher and I'm not sure that my generator goes any higher than this you'd see the amplitude start to uh, slope off um, quite rapidly at some point but uh, it still definitely does work. Here I've changed the uh, generator to put out a, uh, a 500 kilohertz square wave. Um, and so you, at, you can see that the, uh, you know, the, the sweep speed has been changed and we're still relatively good for calibration on, on that. Um, so this scope is, uh, you know, for being something that is going on uh, 66 years old, is that right? Um, still working pretty good. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed the video covering some of the operations of a 1956 type 531 oscilloscope from Tektronix and look forward to uh, doing a few more. Thank you.